right, grade fives, continuing with our big idea. Understanding operations helps us to solve problems in the real world. And remember, our operations are adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing, with a focus on multiplying and dividing for this unit. Our concept has been to demonstrate, or will be today, to demonstrate an understanding of problem solving using the multiplication and division that we've used in this unit. So it's applying it now to a problem solving situation. A couple key things when you're trying to decide whether or not it's multiplication or it's division. Is it one large number that you are breaking into groups? Then it is division. Is it a certain number of things that you are putting into a certain number of groups? Then it's probably multiplication. So for example, if you have five people, each person is getting 25 things, you are multiplying. So let's take a look at some sample questions, shall we? Here we have Robert who spent $147 on stamps and coins for his collection. He bought 14 stamps for $37. Wow, expensive stamps. $37 each. They must have been very rare stamps. How much money did he spend on coins? Ooh, this is a two-step question. First of all, I need to figure out how much money he spent on stamps. So I'm going to have to look. Okay, I have 14 stamps. Gosh, that S is not looking very good. One moment, let me fix that. 14 stamps. And each stamp was $37. So that means I am creating groups because each stamp was $37. Stamp 1, 37. Stamp 2, 37. Stamp 3, 37. I want groups of 37. I need 14 groups of 37 to be exact. So I'm going to have to multiply 14 times 37. I could use a whole variety of strategies. They've used you, showed you partial product here, which is fairly similar to um, grid method that we've talked about a lot. Um, here they have it written out in numbers. This is the grid method that we have always been using. So we've got 10 37 to split into 30 and 7. Um, 14 split into the 10 and the 4. And in this box, remember, it's 10 times 30, annexing 0. 10 times 30, 1 times 3 is 3. We took off two zeros. We're going to add two zeros back on, so that would be 300. In this box, we have 10 times 7. 1 times 7 we know is 7. We took off 1 0, so we're adding 1 0 back on. Makes it, makes it 70. In this next box, we have 4 times 30. 4 times 3 is 12. I took off 1 0, so I'm going to add another 0 on. And then lastly, 4 times 7, which is 28. And then I need to add all of those up, and you can see as I was writing them, I made sure I lined up all of my ones places with my ones places, my tens places with my tens places, and so on. So 8 plus nothing is 8. 7 plus 2 is 9, plus 2 more is 11. I have to carry it. Uh, 3 plus 1 is 4, plus 1 more is 5. So 518 stamps. But that only gives me part of my answer. Huh, I know that this is how much money he spent all together. And we want to know how much he spent on coins if he spent this much on stamps. So, my final step is going to have to be subtraction. If this was my total amount of money, 1,478, and I know I've already spent 518 on stamps. I have to take that away to see how much is left to figure out how much of that was on coins. Now, I'm just going to insert a square here so that I can do this without so I can do this without all of that background. One moment. All right, there we go. That's easier to work with. So 1478 we said it was total 
and we've now spent 518, so we're going to take that away. 8 minus 8 is 0. 7 minus 1 is 6. 4 take away 5. Ooh, wait a minute. I can't take 5 away from 4. I need to borrow, so I'm going to take 1 from my 1,000 spot. It's going to become 0. It becomes 10 over here, so my new number is 14 here. 14 take away 5 is 9. So, to find out my final answer about how much money did he spend on coins, I now have that. He spent $960 on coins. Note, sometimes you have to do two steps to be able to figure out your final answer. So make sure after you've done your first step that you go back and you look at that problem and say, okay, did I answer that part, that, that actual question? If I know he had 14 stamps for $37 each, so on stamps he has $518. Let's go back. How much money did he spend on coins? Oh, shucks. That wasn't what I wanted to find out. What else do I need to do to figure it out? Make sure you go back and look at that, those questions carefully. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. We have Mackenzie, who uses 16 meters of fabric to make four outfits from one pattern. So four of the same outfit, really. How much fa fabric, excuse me, how much fabric would she need to make nine outfits? Hmm. Well, how much does it take her to make one outfit, it would be my first question. So if I know 16 meters makes four outfits, how am I going to figure out how much is in one outfit? Well, I've got 16 and I've got to divide it into groups of four. So I'm going to divide by four. 16 divided by four is four. So that means then one outfit needs four meters. Okay, let's go back and see if I've answered my question. How much fabric would she need to make nine outfits? Oh, shucks. No, nope, I've only figured out how much she needs for one outfit. Okay, well, if for one outfit she needs four meters, and now I'm trying to make nine outfits, that means I'm going to need four and four and four and four, nine times. Ooh, that's multiplication. I need four times nine. Four groups of nine is 36. There's my answer. For nine outfits, she's going to need 36 meters of fabric. Again, a two-step problem, so look carefully. Remember, there are key words to tell you when to multiply, and there are key words that tell you when to divide. So what, what kinds of things do you notice? Turn and talk to your elbow partner or think to yourself, what kinds of things do you notice when you're looking for it to be a multiplication question? What kinds of things do you notice when you think it's a division question? Well, generally, if it's getting bigger, it's going to be multiplication. If it's getting bigger, so you have uh, 13 groups of students, that are going to make teams. Um, you have five in each team. How many students do you have all together? That's going to be made into a bigger number. Okay, And it's creating groups of something. So how many groups of something is going to be this total? Division is usually, well, is always getting smaller. Taking a total and putting it into equal groups. If it's not equal groups, then it's probably subtraction, so be careful not to confuse those two. Taking a total amount and putting it into equal groups. $579, and I want to split it between uh, my four family members. I'm going to take $579 and split it into four equal groups, so each person gets the same amount. Different from, I have $579, I owe $4 to, so, to um, my daughter, so now I have to take that away. So watch that carefully. All right, now we're going to do some practice. 
You have three questions here. I'm not going to tell you what operation to use because that's part of the goal today is to figure out what operation. I will read them to you just so that if, you're, if your reading is a little bit uh, of an area that you need some work on, you don't have to struggle with reading and figuring out the words here, so I'll read it to you. Question number four. Most minivans have three wiper blades. How many sets of three blades can be made from 342 blades? Go ahead and solve that one. Number 10, Alex is putting 246 sports cards into an album. He will mount eight cards on each page. How many pages will Alex need? And last one, George is tiling a wall. His wall has 27 rows, each with 27 tiles in each row. Sharma is tiling a different wall. Her wall has 26 rows of tiles with 29 tiles in each wall, or each row, sorry. Whose wall has more tiles? Go ahead and solve that one. All right, let's take a look. Most minivans have three wiper blades, two on the front and one on the back window. How many sets of three blades can be made from 342? So you're taking 342 and you are putting them into groups of three and then you want to see how many groups you can make. How many sets? A set is a group. What are we going to have to do? I've got a big number that I'm making into equal groups. That means I need to divide. So 342 divided by my divisor, which is 3. Um, today I'm going to use algorithm method. So let's go ahead and try that. Algorithm method. So, remember with algorithm method, it's estimate, multiply, subtract, compare, bring down. I'm going to estimate. How many groups of three do I need to fit into three? Three times what is three? Well, three times one. Three times one is what? This is my multiply step. Three times one is actually three. So I'm going to write that down. Now I need to subtract them. Well, three minus three is what? Zero. Now I need to compare them. Is 0 less than 3? Yes, it is. So I'm good. Lastly, I need to bring down. Okay, bring down my 4. Now I need to start all over again. Estimate again. Uh, 3 times what is going to be close to 4? Well, still 3 times 1 is going to be the closest. Now I need to multiply. 3 times 1 is actually 3. It goes down here. Now I need to subtract again, so I'm going to subtract 4 minus 3, well that's 1. Now I'm going to compare again, is 1 less than 3? Yes it is, I'm still good. Now I have to bring down, so I'm going to bring down my 2. 3 groups now that are going to multiply to equal 12, my estimate. 3 times what is close to 12? Ooh, 3 times 4, 3 times 4 is 12. Multiply, 3 times 4 is 12, so I put my 12. I'm running out of room here. Now I need to subtract. 12 minus 12 is 0. I can compare. 0 is less than 3. I'm all good. And I can bring down. Ooh, there's nothing to bring down. I have my answer now, 114. So we could make 114 groups or 114 sets of blades. Remember, you could have used um, repeated subtraction as well. Doesn't matter which process you use you would have ended up with, or you should have ended up with, 114. If you did not, I suggest you go back and check where your error might have been. All right, let's take a look at our next problem. We had Alex, and he was putting 246 sports cards into albums. He needed eight cards per page. How many pages? So 246, eight cards per page, Oh, I need to know how many pages, so I my big number is the sports cards. It's not getting bigger. It's getting put into groups of 8, so that means I have to divide by 8. So, 
246 divided by 8. Um, maybe we will use repeated subtraction here. Let's take a look. 8 times what? Well, I'm going to go 8 times 10. It's going to be 80. I'll subtract. 6 minus nothing is 6. I can't take 8 from 4, so I'm going to have to borrow. That's going to become 1. That's going to become 10. 10, minus, or 10 and 4 is 14. 14 take away 8. Well, that's 6 again. And I have a 1, so I have to keep going. Well, I'm going to try another group of 10. 8 times 10 is 80, so I'm going to subtract 80 again. 6 take away 0 is still 6. 6 take away 8, oh, still can't do that, so I'm going to have to borrow. Take that 1 away. I make it 10, 16, take away 8 is 8. Oh, I'm getting close now. Another 10. Uh, 8 times 10 again is 80. So I'm going to subtract again. 6 minus 0 is 6. 8 take away nothing is nothing. So uh, 8 times what is close to 6? Well, I can't get any closer because it's that's as close as I can get. So that means I have 10 plus 10 plus 10, which is 30, with a remainder of 6. So I could make 30 pages, but I would have 6 cards left over. So remember when we talk about that going above and beyond thing? Um, how I always want you to push your yourself and tell me more than I actually ask you for so that you're showing that you are thinking and that you are critically thinking about the question that would be a good way to do it it would be to say okay well I would end up with 30 pages and how many do I have left over well actually I have six left over so it shows an understanding that you know what that remainder actually means last one let's take a look we have Jordan okay Jordan is tiling a wall. He's got 28, sorry, 27 rows and each row has 27 tiles. So if I think about that in my head, okay, I have, I have one row, 27 tiles, another row, 27 tiles, another row, 27 tiles. Ooh, that's groups of to make a larger number because I want to know how many tiles all together. All right, I'm going to have to multiply. So and again, you can use whatever strategy you want. In this video, we've already used um, grid method. So this time we're going to use, uh, let's use algorithm method this time. Um, I'm just going to erase this here so I have a little bit more room to work with. So we have 27 times 27. So we start with our ones place. 7 times 7 is 14. I put my 4 under the 7. I put my 1 above the 2. Now I'm still working with this 7 in the 1's place, and now I have to go across to the 10's place, so 7 times 2, well that's 14. I have to add in that 1, uh, 15, that goes underneath the 2 with 1 over on the side here. Now I'm moving on to my 10's place, so remember I have to get rid of my, my carrying so I don't mess it up again. I'm going to put in a placeholder. I'm going to put in X because I don't want to get confused with any other zeros. Now I'm working with my 2. I've finished working with my set, this 7. You can even cross it out if you want to. Uh, 2 times 7 here now. 2 times 7 there is, well, 14 still. Again, I'm going to have to carry another one. Okay, I guess I might not have had to cross that one off, but you never know if it's going to be the same number or not. Now I'm going to look at 2 times 2, which is 4, plus the 1, which makes that 5. So now I have to add those up. 4... 5 plus 4 is 9, 5 plus 1 is 6. So Jordan's wall used 694 tiles. Am I done? Nope. Whose wall has more tiles? Well, I don't know that until I figure out how many tiles Sharma's wall had. Well, Sharma's wall had 26 rows of tiles with 29 in each row. So again, I can envision that, oh, 26 rows, 29 each. Ooh, that's groups of, I'm multiplying uh, 26 times 29. Now I used grid method, I've used um, algorithm method. Yeah, let's use lattice method this time. So I've got two and I've got six. 
and then I've got two and I've got nine, so I need to split that into one row for the two and one row, one column for the two, one column for the six, one row for the two and one row for the nine, and then I have to split each box diagonally, right to left, top to bottom. Now, remember, in this box, six times two, six times two is 12, so one up here, two down here. In this box, two times two, two times two is four, so four goes down here, I've got nothing in the tens place, I put a zero. In this box, six times nine, ooh, that's a little bit trickier, hope you know you bas your basic facts. If not, remember, you can use your multiplication table for support here. 54 it is, five is in the tens, four is in the ones. And here we have two times nine, two groups of nine uh, is 18, one in the tens, eight in the ones. Now remember, I need to add up the diagonal sections. Make sure that you are clear that it is the diagonal sections that you are adding. So, four and nothing is four. This diagonal section, ooh, that's gonna be a little bit tricky. Five plus two is eight, plus five is 50, sorry. Five plus two is seven, plus eight is 15. I can't put 15 right here. I have to take that one and I have to carry it, okay? So I cannot put two digit numbers down here. All right, now my next diagonal is one plus one plus four. Two plus four is six plus one more is seven. And zero, which really means nothing. Remember, I have to write down my answer so people know which part is the answer. So my answer is 754. Now am I done? Whose wall has more tiles? Well, I haven't actually said that yet. I can now compare my two numbers and determine whose wall has more tiles because I know Jordan's wall had 694 tiles and now I know Sharma's wall had 754 tiles. Well, if Sharma's wall had 754 tiles, she has more. And I would need to write that in a sentence. Sharma has more tiles or something to indicate what my actual answer is. This work doesn't actually prove the answer. So let's make sure we write that down. Sharma has more, something like that. Oh. Someone could make me a really nice iPad pen. I would love it. These are not very good. All right, perfect. Now you get to go on to your concept practice. Math makes sense, page 110 and 111, numbers two, three, four, and five. Remember, you may use your multiplication table for support. You may not use a calculator. Uh, even to check, you may not use a calculator. To check, you may use the estimation strategies we've talked about because estimation is a very good strategy for checking. As you go along, if you have any problems, make sure you let me know. And of course, I expect to see all the work as evidence of your understanding to support what it is that you've done. Good luck.